Bless you. Welcome to our service tonight. Let's all stand. We're going to sing that little chorus. He's able. How many believe the Lord is able? He is able. Number seven in the chorus book. He's able. Let's try it. Everybody ready? Here we go. He's, he's able. able. Come on, Kesley. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able. He's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He heals the brokenhearted and he sets the captive free. He makes the lame to walk again and he calls the blind to see. He's able. He's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Now, I want you to know something. This is a great little course. All of these courses have scriptural foundation. And so this is a good one. This is a really a good one. You could sing it in the grocery store. You could sing it just about anywhere you go. And it will get people's attention. And if you really want to do something, learn the signs like Kesley's showing us tonight. You ready? Let's try it again. Everybody, here we go. Ready? He's able. He's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able. He's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He heals the broken hearted and he sets the captive free. He makes the lame to walk again and he calls the blind to see. He's able. He's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Now look, I'm going to let them sing it one more time. And while they do, I want you to turn around and say hello to folk. Tell them how glad you are they are here tonight. All right? One more time, ladies. You mind? Here we go. Okay, Kesley. He's able, he's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. He's able. appreciate you being here tonight, and I want to welcome all of those who are watching online, encourage you to click the subscribe button, I like button, and visit us at the website at gulfcoastbaptistchurch.com, and tell us all about you if you would. But we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to ask Brother Matt, if you would, to come and pray for us. Then, Matt's going to lead us in a couple of songs. All right, let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you so much again to be able to be here this evening. We ask you to bless everything that is said and done here as prayers are lifted up. And may you just uh, give us a sense of your presence. Just give us a sense of your presence tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. While standing, let's open up to page number 41, sweet by and by. Number 41. Oh, there's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there, in the sweet by and by, we shall be We shall meet on that beautiful shore. 
147, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, number 147. Familiar song, here we go. Oh, what, what a fellowship, fellowship what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessing this, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all. God bless you. God bless you. We could have a little music while they go down, but you can be seated. That's okay. I'm so glad you're here tonight. And by the way, I really thank you so much. I want to thank you so much for your kindness to our graduates and for the time of fellowship. Wasn't that a blessing to be able to fellowship with them? And of course, I know that uh, Brother Butts will come in a moment and tell you all about how grateful he is for your kindness too his son and future daughter-in-law. It's amazing, isn't it? She didn't know she was coming down on a, on a trial. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She's a sweetheart of a girl. I'm so glad Christian met her. I remember Christian going off and wondering what in the world he's going to do. And uh, he's uh, finished school. Now he's going to be working with my brother in Knoxville. Can you believe it? And um, so I'm excited for both of them that the Lord will bless them. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer in just a few moments. We want you to pray for some folk and pray the Lord to help us. We're, we're working at, at trying to get a church re-going in Andrus Island in the Bahamas. Brother T.J. Tilly is going to be going there in a week or so. And he's going to be meeting with Brother Ricardo Lees on that island. There is a church building that's been closed for about... Um, I guess uh, 15, 16 years, and uh, there's 20-something thousand people on the island. It's the only church there. It's kind of sad, isn't it? And so they're getting some things. We just shipped them out a box of gospel tracts. I think we sent them uh, uh, 2,500 gospel tracts. Is that right? Somewhere around the door with the Bahamian flag on it. I want you to pray for the tracks, pray that pray for the folks that are going to be going there, some of the church members from the church in, in Liberty Baptist Church in, in, uh, in the Bahamas, Nassau, Bahamas, is going to go there and meet with Brother TJ and Brother Ricardo Lees, and I think one of the men out of uh, Orlando uh, is going to be going also, and they're going to spend a week uh, canvassing the island, heading out gospel tracks, trying to get people saved, and then... Uh, see if there's some interest in getting the church up and going again. Won't that be exciting? And we're praying the Lord will help us. There's a young man who's praying about going and being the pastor of it. And what we do with Five Star Christian Ministries is we try to advance the cause of Christ. And, you know, we've been a part of starting many churches. I asked Brother TJ how many churches we've helped start in Africa. And uh, he said in Africa about 600 there. Can you believe that? And then we've, of course, been a part of church planting in Asia and and uh, in that part of the world, and we thank God for that. And, but uh, we want to try to do all we can to get things going, and, of course, get them going here, too. So you pray for Five Star Christian Ministries. 
We're praying God will give us some laborers to help us to uh, to reach the world and and to uh, to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. We were able to start a fellowship in Africa with seven nations, and uh, we had at one time we were working with ten, but we have seven nations who are part of the fellowship, and they have a threefold purpose. Number one is to advance the cause of Christ, take the gospel to every con every country and every nation and try to reach people the gospel. Number two is to train and equip the next generation to come along with us. And number three, to encourage one another. So it's to advance the cause of Christ, bring the next generation on board and encourage one another. And that's the purpose of our fellowship and our, our ministry with the uh, Fellowship of African Independent Baptists. And uh, so we've, we did the same thing in the Caribbean. We're just trying to get that going. So you pray that, pray for that if you wouldn't. Pray the Lord to help us. It's a fellowship of Caribbean Independent Baptists. Pray the Lord to help us. We've got several places. And uh, so make that a matter of your prayer. I want to give you a verse, and in a moment, Brother Billy's going to come up and give us some special prayer requests. But I want to give you a verse. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me. And I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Wow. How many believe God can do anything? Amen. He certainly can. We sing that little chorus around here, and that's the Bible verse that was the foundation of the one who wrote that song, the little verse, God can do anything. And so I believe he can. All he needs is somebody. Amen. And so Brother Billy's going to come in just a moment, but before he does, how many have a special prayer request on this side that you don't mind sharing? Very quickly, a special prayer request we can put on the list on this side. And by the way, if you're watching, be sure and email us, and if you would, those special prayer requests. Yes, Donna? All right, we pray for the students. Yes, it is Florida, right? All right. An unspoken request. We'll get those. By the way, how many have an unspoken? I've got about five of them. So we'll pray for those. Anybody else on this side with a special prayer request? Yes. Yes, we'll pray for Anna. She's not feeling well tonight. Oh, what? Oh, Andrew, my goodness. Do what? Oh, let's pray for Linda and Andrew. Can't hardly believe it. Linda, little Linda. I call her little Linda. And her name is Triple L, little Linda Laminator. <laughs> she la laminates everything for us here that we, <laughs> we send overseas. So, <laughs> uh, all right, we'll pray for her tonight. God bless you, Linda. We miss you. Anyone else on this side now? Special prayer request. Okay, Yes. All right, we'll pray for her, pray for Daughter to Heal. Yes, someone else? Yes. All right, we will. What's his first name, Tammy? Joshua, okay. Yes, Kelly. My cousin, he, him and his wife had a baby today. He's working on the baby having low blood sugar. All right. They have to do a period of tests before they'll release him. So we'll just keep playing All right, we will. Luca, you got any update on the, the lady at the. Uh, Okay. Yes. All right, we'll pray for her. What's your first name again? Key. Key. Okay. Anyone else special? Yes. Josh, 
All right, we'll pray for him. All right, anyone else? Yes, Fred? Oh, okay, pray for Freddie. We will. All right, we're going to, yes? Yeah, Patsy Allen, pray for her. She's having back surgery May the 25th, okay? All right, so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and Brother Billy's going to come up and give the list, and then Brother Robert will come and lead us in prayer for these special prayer requests tonight, if you would, Brother Robert. On the prayer request tonight, we have uh, Patsy Allen, who's having back surgery May the 26th, Kathy Miller with health issues, uh, Linda Iovino is out sick, and Anna Benitez is out sick. And then we've got these requests that were handed, handed in tonight, uh, Linda Iovino, Anna, unspoken request, uh, the request that Donna Davidson gave, uh, Andrew, uh, Pat Ruck's request, Joshua, uh, Kelly's request and Kitty with brains having brain surgery and uh, Freddie Fre uh, Freddie David you don't leave this there. Okay. thank you Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love you, Lord, and we thank you for your goodness to us, Lord, and just thank you for everything that you have done and are doing in our lives and our church, Lord, and we ask you, Lord God, to just continue to work in the hearts and lives of people, Lord, as, uh, as we work to advance your cause. To, uh, to see lost souls come to know you, Lord God, and just ask you, Lord, to, uh, to just continue to, uh, to move in the hearts and lives of people, Lord. We think of these prayer requests, Lord God, Patsy Allen, the back surgery coming up, Lord God, Kathy Miller, Lord, Le Linda Iavino, who's sick as well, Lord, and, and uh, Anna Benitez, Lord, and also those others that are sick, Lord, that, uh, that were given earlier, Lord, Andrew, Lord, and, and uh, we ask you, Lord, to continue to heal him, Lord, and and uh, we think of uh, the young person who, uh, who passed out because of a dehydration, Lord, at uh, the school, Lord. And we just think, ask you, Lord, to just lay your hand out upon that situation, Lord, as well as the, the other students, Lord, and uh, the other young people, Lord. And may they learn from it. And uh, Pat Ruck's request, Lord, and Joshua and uh, Kelly's request as well, Lord, for... Uh, for uh, what's going on there in that situation, Lord, and, and uh, Lord, we, there are so many different families and and uh, cousins and aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews and and uh, children, Lord God, who uh, parents and brothers and sisters, Lord God, and that uh, and all all of the different family members, Lord God, that uh, that have come across tonight, Lord, that uh, that are sick and ailing, Lord, and the 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 young baby that was born, Lord, and and uh, just so many different things that are going on, Lord, and we know that. Your word tells us, Lord, and in all things give thanks, Lord, and we thank you for the situations and the things that you have you have done and are doing, Lord God, and, and allow us to go through, Lord. Your word also tells us, Lord God, that nothing comes into our life that does not come through your loving hand, Lord. And we ask you, Lord God, to just continue to keep that loving hand around us, Lord God, and uh, may everything that uh, that we do please you, Lord God. And uh, and we uh, we ask you, Lord, to continue to be with our pastor, Lord, and, and uh, the vision that you have given to him to see lost souls get saved, Lord, whether it's in nursing homes, whether it's in schools, Lord, or in in the neighborhood and in Cape Coral or around the country, around the country, around the world, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to just continue to be with him and Miss Sexton, Lord, and and to keep your hedge protection around them, Lord, and uh, and give them wisdom and discernment as they make decisions, Lord, and and as we try to get things back on track, Lord, the nursing home ministry, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to just continue to work in Brother Billy and Gene and and um, and uh, Brother Luca and all those others who are speaking and preaching in the in in those services, Lord God, we ask you to work in their hearts and lives, Lord God, those who will be working in the school. And uh, those who uh, just had this uh, event on uh, Monday night, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that uh, that through the gospel, Lord God, that uh, people will get saved and seeds would be planted, Lord, as well. And we ask you, Lord, to just uh, move in the hearts and lives of people, Lord. We thank you for our music ministry and Miss Lori and Brother Matt and those others, Miss Anna, Lord, and those who lead that up and just continue to speak to the hearts of people through music. And we ask you, Lord, to just be with us tonight, Lord God, work in the hearts and lives of people as only you can, Lord, for we truly do love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, fellas. God bless you. Ushers, come on down if you would, please. Be ready to receive our offering. And um, I want to encourage you and thank you for giving and then also encourage you to continue to give and to pray about making a special gift to advance the cause of Christ amen. and get the gospel printed. 
You know, it's such a small investment that when you think about it, by uh, being able to print gospel tracts, and um, we've printed many tracts, several thousand tracts. We've sent to Ukraine in English, Ukrainian, and in Russian, and pray that God will use those and that the Word of God will not return void. We thank the Lord for that. Well, listen, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much again for the opportunity to be here. And I pray that you would bless this offering. We thank you for people's willingness to give and to honor you. And I pray you'd bless it and use it in Jesus' name. Amen. Every visitor is an honored guest at Gulf Coast Baptist Church, and tonight we have a visitor who we'd like to recognize named Alex Lowry. Let, Alex, if you'd raise your hand over there so we all can see where you're seated. We hope this service speaks to your heart tonight. Okay, if you get your Bibles out and get ready for a message tonight from the Word of God as our pastor comes. But before that, Miss Phyllis is going to come and sing beautifully for us tonight, I'm sure. God bless you, Miss Phyllis. I 
count all things lost for that one precious treasure I see. That one thing is Jesus to me. Amen. God bless you, Sister Phyllis. Brother Billy, how many services have you had today? So they had six services today. This will be the seventh service. Miss Phyllis has been singing in them. Billy's been preaching, Gene, others. And so we're everlastingly at it. And I was just thinking while she was singing... People get get to hear her sing and talk about the Lord. You know, it's something to be part of a service where God can speak to the hearts of people. And, um, you know, we, we are so grateful to God for what the Lord is doing. And um, it's hard to get your mind around this, but the ministry God has given us is much more than this. And I tell you, I, I wish that somehow, some way I could... I could let you see what God is doing in the lives of so many people. I don't know if I've ever been so stirred about a service as what Luca said on Sunday night a few services ago. Was it Sunday night, Luca? Was it about the young lady coming to you? And um, while he's preaching in one of the gospel hours on Friday, is that was a Friday service? And preaching one of the gospel hours, uh, one of the ladies heard him preaching and her mother's uh, dying and crying and scared of where she's going to spend eternity. And the, her daughter come running in and interrupted the service, I guess, and said, can you please come and talk to my mother? She's got cancer, she's dying, and she's afraid. And so it was so stirring to hear it. And he left and went and talked to her, and she trusted the Lord as her Savior. You know, if we don't do get anything else accomplished, that's what it's all about, isn't it? People are waiting. They're waiting to hear the gospel. They're just waiting. You know, I, it's hard for me to get my mind around how many people in this part of the country are just waiting. They're just waiting. Now, they may look like they've got everything going on. They may be playing golf, fishing, or whatever. But the truth of the matter is they're just waiting. They're just waiting. I want you to take your Bible and turn with me to the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 5. You know, being a preacher, it's kind of interesting because, as I mentioned before, sometimes you get so much on your wagon, you can't get it all clean, you know? And I do like emptying the wagon before I load something else up. But I want to share with you tonight the rest of the story. And I want you to look with me, if you would, in 2 Kings chapter number 5. And let's pick up the story in verse number 15. This is after Naaman has been healed and cleansed. He's coming back to Elisha and he's, he wants him to know what God has done. What a work. You know, this is quite an event, quite a thing that happened. As a matter of fact, it is so important that the Lord Jesus said this is the only leper that was cleansed in the Old Testament. Now we would think that they were cleansed everywhere, but this is it. This is the only one. This is it. By the way, if you had leprosy and you heard somebody got cleansed, would you try to find the place where God could cleanse you? Isn't it amazing? They see God do something that nobody wants to... I, I, you would think the whole world, everybody sick would find a way to get to Elijah and say, I want to know the God <clears throat> that cleansed Naaman. I want to know what he can do for me. But the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse number 15, and he returned, <clears throat> excuse me, he returned to the man, the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him. By the way, this is a pretty big crowd that's with him. And he stood before him. Now remember, the last time Naaman was here, he was a leper. And now he's standing there clean, his skin's like that of a child. And he said, Behold, now, I want you to notice his statement. Now I know there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. 
Now, therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. By the way, do you believe that this is a true God, the Lord God of the Hebrews, the one and only, that he is Lord God of all the earth? And do you believe that all the earth should know him? Listen, that's what happened. Naaman said, hey, there's only one God. There's only one. I know that now. Verse number 16. And he said, uh, he said, verse number, he said, I know there's uh, only one God. Take a blessing of thy servant. In other words, now remember, he has this gold, he has this silver, and he has these raiments. Now, we don't really get a whole, uh, 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 our mind around all of it, but he's got 10 talents of silver. That's 750 pounds of silver. A little over $200,000 worth of silver. He's got 150 pounds of gold, 6,000 pieces of gold. That's about $3.5 million worth of gold. He's got $200,000 worth of silver and $3.5 million worth of gold. And he says to Elijah, I want you to take this. <laughs> this is your... And by the way, I got all 10 raiments, 10... 10 uh, clothes that you can look like you're a wealthy man. Now imagine that. Can you imagine today a preacher turning down three and a half million dollars worth of gold and two hundred thousand dollars worth of silver and a wardrobe a brand new heart shaft and marks clothes. Now look what Elijah said. But he said as the Lord liveth before whom I stand I will receive none and he urged him to take it. He didn't just say, no, no, come on, Elijah. Come on. I know you can do something with this money. You Please take this money. Imagine all that was with him, the soldiers and the whole entourage is with him. They're, they cannot believe what God has done. God has healed Naaman. And Naaman has declared there's only one God. In other words, he's met God. And he says, please take this offering. I want you to have it. And Elijah said, nope, don't want it. Now we know that he has a servant that's going to sneak around and go get a little bit of it. He's going to get about $20,000 worth of silver and a couple of chains of clothes. And God's going to give him leprosy because of what he does. But Elijah said, no, no, I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take it. And I want you to notice in verse number 17, this is very important. He said, I pray thee then. Now this is Naaman speaking. Pray thee, be given to thy servant. He said, I want you to give me something, Elijah. Two mules burdened of earth for thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto the other gods, but unto the Lord. He said, then will you do me a favor? Can I have two mules loaded down with dirt and earth from this place? And so he gave it to him. I want to speak tonight on this subject. Two mules, a load of dirt, and a story to tell. Two mules, a load of dirt, and a story to tell. Now, if we could have seen the return of this man who's been healed of leprosy. If we could have seen him first leaving, we would have thought, my goodness, he's wasting his time and going to waste all this money. But now he's coming back to Syria. He's healed. He's cleansed. And you can only imagine, now you can only imagine the celebration that everyone is experiencing as they work their way back home. The shouting and the glory to God. Hallelujah. What a Savior. He's been healed. He's no longer a leper. And by the way, in the Bible days, if you had leprosy, you couldn't get around anybody. You, you were forced to put a rag over your face and you had to cry loud, unclean, unclean. Nobody could get near you. Now, he's going to come home. He's going to hug his family. He's going to be able to kiss his wife. Can you imagine He's excited. Would you be excited if God healed you of leprosy and you were going to live? And matter of fact, you're not just going to live, but you're going to live for God. And there's rejoicing. And you see, see him coming. You see 
First of all, you see all this silver. And then you see all this gold. And you see the change of raiment and you say, what happened? And by the way, what's on those mules? <laughs> and he would say, I brought something back with me. I brought back two mules loaded down with earth. I brought that back. Now, if you would have asked Naaman, what do you think is the most valuable thing that you have loaded up? Would it be the silver? Would it be the gold? Would it be the raiment? He'd say, no. The most valuable thing to me is that earth, that dirt in those, on those mules. That means more to me than anything in this world. And I brought it back. Now, you know, we get caught up in stories and we, our hearts are broken when things happen. And by the way, the, what happened to the little maid is heart-wrenching. It is heart-wrenching. Can you imagine, as we talked about it Sunday, I thought, my goodness, how sad to think that this little girl was raised by a mom and dad and prepared to go and to be a mother and to continue all that God had done in her life and to have her family and to have grandchildren. But yet, everything was cut off. She was captured. She found herself a servant in Syria from the very man who had captured her. And she learned some things. She learned how to get over what had happened in her life. By the way, I would to God, more Christians would learn that. She learned how to love people that were not easy to love. I wish more Christians would learn that. And then she learned to serve God where she was. Now, do you believe God is in control of things? Do you really believe that? Do you believe God knows what He's doing when things happen in our life? Is He still God in the valley as He is the God on the mountain? Is He God in the, in the storms just like He's God in the sun? Is He still God? Well, God knew what was going on in the world and God knew everything about Naaman and God knew everything about the little maid and God allowed all of this to happen. One of the great truths I learned about God, one of the great truths I learned about God is that we're kept by the power of God, not by our power, but by the power of God. Jesus said in John chapter 10 that we're in God's hands and no one is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Then he said, no one's able to pluck them out of my hand. We're in God's hand. Do you believe that tonight? Yeah. If we're in God's hands, I want you to know something. Nothing can touch you and nothing can touch me unless a loving Father allows that to come into our life. Now this little maid was in the hand of God and God has allowed her to be captured. And I can only imagine how difficult it was for her and how many nights she might have cried herself to sleep. And can only imagine what her mother and father felt and if she had any siblings, what they thought about it. And everything that was planned for this little maid is now gone and gone forever. And if we'd interviewed everybody, we'd say the worst thing that ever happened, our little girl has been captured. She's a prisoner in Syria. She's a servant to a, a man who has leprosy. But see, God knows more than that. God knows what's going on in the world. Now, as crazy as it may seem, God had this little girl planted right where she needed to be. And she knew something about God. As I mentioned on Sunday, she was not going to try to make something out of a bad situation. She was determined she was going to have God's blessing no matter where she was. And she spoke up. That was a bold witness, by the way, to say that God is God and would to God that my master would get to my preacher. There's a prophet in Israel. And he'll heal him of this leprosy. <laughs> I think it's amazing that Jesus made reference to that, that of all the people in, 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 uh, in Syria and in Israel that have leprosy, only one was healed, only one only one, and it was because the little maid said, there's hope no matter how bad it looks. There's a God in heaven that can help you. And on her testimony, 
the king of Syria gathered all this wealth, loaded the wagons down, and sent Naaman and his, his men to Israel. He came to the king of Israel. We read that in the portion of Scripture. The, same, the king of Israel, when he heard that, he, he rent his clothes. In other words, that's, that's a sign I am hopeless. I can just see him renting his, tearing his clothes, falling down, saying, please, have mercy on me. He said, who am I? God, I can't heal you. And when Elijah heard that the king has rent his clothes, Elijah said, send, word, send him to me. Send him to me. I want to talk to him. Now here's this mighty man of war, this national hero. And he comes to Elijah's house. You know the story. And Elijah doesn't even go out and speak with him. He just tells him, go dunk seven times and you'll come up clean. And you know, he didn't want to do it, but he did it. And when he did, he came up clean and he runs back to Elijah. And he says, I know there's only one God in all the world. And as long as I live, he's going to be my God. And I'm going to serve him. And I'm going to worship him and him alone. Now, could you do me a favor? You don't want all this silver. You don't want all this gold. But there's one thing I would like to have. I would like for you to let me take two mules loaded down with this earth back to my home. On one of my occasions when I went to Israel, I asked the people, what can you take? They said, well, first of all, you can take all the rocks you want. You can have as many rocks as you want. And I brought back rocks. I may have seen my Calvary rock, big old rock. I brought, put it in my suitcase. I brought back rocks for everybody. From Calvary, would you like to have one? Don't have any more, but... <laughs> and then I brought back water from the Jordan River. By the way, every time we refill the baptistry, we put a little bit of that Jordan water in the baptistry. I don't know if it does anything good for you, but it does me. <laughs> and then I brought back some water from the Dead Sea. And just brought back some things like that. But we didn't bring back any dirt, because they don't want you taking dirt. Can't do that. But you can have all the rocks, you can have all the water. But dirt is a different story. And so he asked Elijah, can I have some of this precious soil that I stood on when you told me about God and I got cleansed and God delivered me? Can I have some of this ground to take back with me? I don't know about you, but it just stirs my heart to think about it. It stirs my heart. Now look, the earth from that place that Naaman took was the very place where he heard the glorious message of Christ, the gospel. We said yes to God, and he made his statement of faith. He was on that ground that he heard how to be saved, and it's on that very ground that he looked at Elisha and said, Now I know there's only one God in all of the world. And he was his servant. Naaman brought home some of that soil to remind him of what God had done when God met him, and God cleansed him, and God changed his life. He said, Thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord I will. That's his statement of faith. I like that, don't you? And he took back with him into the land of Syria a reminder of what, he, what had happened in his life. Is there any place in this world that's precious to you? I know where I got saved. I know where God spoke to my heart. And I want you to know something that's very dear to me. I was just recently down with Brother uh, Pastor Glenn Wiggins, pastor in the, the Seagate Baptist Church. For many years, Pastor Jim Odom, Dr. Jim Odom, pastored Seagate Baptist Church. And uh, he was a faithful, faithful man of God, built that ministry up. Now his son-in-law and daughter, his son-in-law is pastor of the church. I was just there on Tuesday, and we ordained his assistant pastor, 
Brother Donnie was a blessing. And every time I go near that place, I'm reminded of the night that God spoke to my heart as a child of God, and I surrendered my life to serve God with my life. As a matter of fact, I'm here tonight preaching in this place tonight because of what happened that day in that service. Do you know how precious that is to me? That very spot that God spoke to me and said, I have more for your life. Wow, my goodness. I love that. I love it. I have in my office, I have a book from the pews of Highland Park Baptist Church. When God called me to preach, I remember there was an old book. They put so much tape on it, they couldn't put any more tape on it. So they were going to throw it away, and I said, no, let me have it. And I have a songbook from the very service and very place, and God spoke to my heart, and I said yes to God, and I surrendered to be a preacher. Every once in a while, I pull that songbook out and look at it. That book's precious to me. Now, it may not be worth anything to anybody else, but they're worth a lot to me. And Naaman said, there's something I want to bring home with me. Syria's got all the dirt in the world, but they don't have any place like this place. I'd like to take a little with me. First of all, he took back with him, he took back with him a reminder of what God had done. Plus, this is going to be a place where he's going to worship God. Naaman makes a statement. I worship no other God. I'm going to be only worshiping God. <laughs> Do you remember when the Lord Jesus, when you're reading when the Lord Jesus was talking to the woman at the well? Now, that, that, this fascinates me. It fascinates me. I, I think there's so much to it. I, I don't believe we'll ever even get close to touching the hem of the garment of the great truth that God put in His Word in John chapter number 4 when Jesus had a divine encounter with a woman of Samaria who'd been married five times and living with a man. And Jesus is sitting on the well. He's sitting on the promise of God. You see, God promised Jacob that one day he would come and meet with his children. And Jesus is sitting there on that well fulfilling a promise from centuries ago waiting to meet with the children of Jacob. And here she comes. And he begins to talk to her. Now the disciples thought, what in the world is he talking to her about? Does he not know she's a woman of the city? Does he not know this woman? Just look at her. She's, she's had a rough life. And I don't know if they knew she'd been married five times and lived with a man, but I'm sure her life's, her, her appearance was was easy to see. She's had a hard life. And Jesus is talking to her. And the disciples are concerned that He's talking to this woman. They have no idea what He's talking to her about. Because a woman asked Him. She said, Are you greater than Jacob? Our father gave us this well and his children. And He said, she said, and he said Yes. <laughs> And then he said, I have living water. If you'd asked me, I'd give you some. Living water, you never thirst again. And then she turned the conversation into spiritual things. She said, well, we've been told that when the Messiah comes, and he said, he that speaketh to thee is he. Do you know that's the first time the Lord Jesus told any human being He was the Messiah, God in the flesh? And He told that woman at the well. And then she wanted to know something. You know what she wanted to know? She got and say, she wanted to know, okay, how do we worship God? And He said, well, she said, some say we worship in Jerusalem, but we're the mountain. And He goes, the hour cometh when God the Father seeketh worship. He must be worshiped in spirit and in truth. It's not necessarily the place that you worship. It's who you worship. When Naaman took that dirt home, he was not taking the place. He was taking a reminder that he had met God standing on that dirt. And now he's going to worship God in his home on this dirt. 
I don't know about you. That thrills my heart to think about it. That out of all the things he could have had, he could have had it all. He could have taken the, the millions of dollars worth of gold and the silver. He could have had all of it. He didn't want it. He wanted this mule, these two mules with a wagon load of dirt. That earth is a place where he learned how to worship God. That earth also has a promise God made. Now look, this little maid wasn't your average Christian. I've got, I hope you've gathered that, not your average believer. The average believer would have never said anything about anything, but this little girl knew God. How many understand that? Amen. She knew God. You see, she knew who God is and she knew who she was. And she said, would to God you could get to my prophet and he would heal you of this because God can do anything. And I'm sure she's talked to her, 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 her Naaman's wife and talked to others about God and about what God can do. And you know, the children of Israel held on to a promise all through the Old Testament. And by the way, they're still holding on to that promise. The promise is this, that God made a covenant with Abraham. How many have ever heard of the Abrahamic covenant? You've heard of it. Oh my goodness. Well, look, God promised Abraham that he would bless all of those who blessed him was good to him. By the way, that's why we want to be good to Abraham. But God also made a promise to Abraham that this land would be his. And that covenant is in Genesis chapter number 15 when God had Abraham do something that was kind of unusual. He had him take some animals, cut them apart, and separate them. And then the Bible says that God walked through those animals. That sounds odd to us, doesn't that sound odd to you? And the reason he did that, because Abraham asked this question. He said, how do I know that you're going to do this? How do I know that? And, and, and uh, how do I know that you're going to do everything you promised? And God said, here's what I want you to do. And then when God walked through those animals. He made a covenant with Abraham. Now here's what God said. If I do not keep my promise to you, then what's happened to these animals will happen to me. And by the way, God is not about to die. God promised Israel the land. Read about it in Genesis chapter 15. Read about it when Abraham said, now I believe. And from that moment, God made a covenant with Abraham. We're still looking for that to be fulfilled. The nation of Israel is back in the land. And it's an amazing. One of these days, we're going to see all of that fulfilled. Well, anyway, Naaman has taken home with him some of this dirt, some of this earth from the very place where God promised that he would make sure that Israel continued to live. By the way, let me ask you a question. What do you think that meant to that little maid? That he brought back some land, some dirt. When he said, look, I got this right there where your prophet lives. Right in the heart of where God promised he would bless you and bless your people from generation to generation. You see, Abraham, that Naaman got in on the blessing of Abraham. By the way, that's what we've done. Thank God for that. He took this earth back because he was in on God's plan for the ages. He understood something. He understood that not only is he going to heaven, but he gets the, the benefit of being a child of God and all the blessings that God promised Abraham is now his. Now that's encouraging to me. Is that encouraging to you? By the way, how many promises has God given you He's promised you everything. You don't have time to look, but in 1 Corinthians, the Bible says, all things are yours. Things present, things to come. Can you imagine what God's got for us? It's all ours. Do you have anything that reminds you of God's promises? Do you have anything that you can hold in your hands that reminds you of all that God has promised you? Now, that, and Naaman didn't have a Bible, but we got one. And when you hold the, hold the Word of God in your hands, I want you to know something. You're holding the promise of God that all of these things God says one day is going to happen for you. 
I love the fact that he brought back with him these mules loaded down with all of that. Let me say one more thing. What about the little maid? I mean, after all, is this not about her? Is this not about her getting over what happened in her life? Is this not about her believing God can come through no matter what the devil's doing? Is this not about the little maid continuing to serve God and to have the joy of the Lord and to believe God? Well, what about her? What did she get out of all of this? What did she get? Well, she became the most famous believer in the world. There's not anyone in the, in the world that didn't know about this little maid. When she spoke, the king of Syria listened. When she spoke, Naaman listened. When she spoke, Elijah has said, there's been a promise given you by a faithful child of God that believes God. And I wonder, I wonder if Elijah did not come out and heal Naaman because this little maid said, I believe. You know, it'll take eternity for us to see what God has done just because we believe. <laughs> we believe. You know, the most powerful thing in this world is your faith. The Bible said, I'd faint unless I believe to see the goodness of God in the land of living. Nothing ever happens unless a child of God believes. Well, she believed. And now here it is. Wouldn't you like to be there when he got back? Wouldn't you like to be there and see that whole thing come back? And you say, look, 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 look. It's Naaman. He's cleansed. Word has already came. God has done a work. I mean, news like that travels fast. We think of parents thought about it. Boy, God's got it right where He needed. Now everything begins to come into focus that everything has happened the way God has let it happen. Everything. Do you know this little maid was not only famous in the world, but she was famous in heaven. Because according to Jesus, Luke chapter 4, verse 27, it's the only case in the Bible where people were healed before Jesus stepped onto this earth. Now look, one of the signs that Jesus was the Messiah, or is the Messiah, is the leopards are cleansed. That's one of the signs. There's a lot of lepers got cleansed during the Lord's earthly ministry. This one got cleansed in the Old Testament. And Jesus said, only one. Only one. This is going to give you a little preview of what's going to happen when God shows up and walks among you. This is going to be happening. He's going to cleanse the leper. <laughs> and he said, this happened. Why did it happen? Because he has a faithful servant who loves people and believes God. And no matter what's going on in the world, it's going to hold on to faith. She saw something. She saw her master transformed. Let me ask you a question. Has there been anybody in your personal life, in your history, that truly is a testimony of the amazing grace of God and the power of the glorious gospel? Is there anybody like that you know? Somebody, God really did something. This little maid, she's world renowned. They know her. This little maid has seen God transform a person's life, made him brand new. By the way, nothing's real unless it's personal. This came home to her. She's seen it. She's seen it. And then, she saw something very common become a treasure in the hand of God. She saw something. What'd she see? She saw dirt, earth, become precious. You know, people always say that we're just dust. We're formed out of the clay and we go back into it. 
But you know, when God touches us, He turns this clay into treasures. What is the real treasures? Here's a verse. The Bible says, But my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I used to think on that. What does that mean? But my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now what does God have in glory? What is His riches in glory? Well, you know, I, I'm writing a new track on heaven and I'm talking about the streets of gold and the walls of jasper and the gates of pearl and all that God has. But that's not what the Bible's talking about. That's not His riches in glory. Do you know what God has in glory that's rich? People. People. And when you pray and ask God to meet your needs, God gives you People. Are you still with me? When Jesus said, The harvest truly is, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, they send forth laborers into the harvest. When you pray and ask God to give you something to do something, God always gives you people. Thank God for people. All you need is somebody that believes God, somebody that will sell out to God, somebody that will take all that God puts in their hands and put it in His work. You'll see God do great and mighty things. God says, call upon me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Do you know what this little maid saw? She saw treasures. She saw some dirt that had been transformed. I don't know all that happened when, when that mule came. I would like to think, and this is just me, I would like to think that he brought back two mules loaded with earth, one for me and one for you. I brought you back a gift. Maybe he took it all and made, made a place to worship. Most people believe that uh, Naaman just took that dirt, that earth, and built an altar for God in Syria. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. Maybe he gave one of the mules the dirt to build the altar for him, and maybe he gave one of the mules of dirt to build the altar for the little maid. But I'll tell you one thing. She was rich in treasures. She didn't want gold. She didn't want silver. She could have lived for gold. She could have lived for silver. She could have lived for the raiment. But she lived so that God could touch somebody's life and make them whole again. Now that was her reward. And not only did God only heal one leper in Israel, there was only one little maid that was able to call down the power of God and to pray and believe. And she had such enormous faith that Naaman was carried by her faith to the door of Elijah, to the very ground that he stood on where he declared that there's only one God in the earth. And he brought back that dirt as a testimony. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you something. Two mules, a load of dirt, and quite a story to tell. From then on, I think every time people come, they, they didn't come say, they didn't come say, show me that wagon of gold. I'd like to see that wagon of gold. Show me that wagon of silver. No, no, no. Show me that dirt. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to touch it with my hands. I want to see this very place. This is the soil. This is it. This is where God did. This is it. This is where Naaman stood and heard God. This is where he stood and declared, there is the only one God in the earth. Boy, my goodness. If God can do this for him, what could God do for me? Isn't it amazing? Isn't it just like God to take something so simple, so common, touch it, and transform a nation with a testimony of it? Amen? I don't know about you, but I want God to do something like that with this dirt. This dirt. Many years ago, before I came to know the Lord, I was just a young kid, teenager. 
My friend and I were riding down Pine Island Road. And uh, I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't married. I was just a young, goofy guy. And we passed a church. And my friend said to me, he said, Tommy, let's start a church. I said, well, we could. And I said, well, what would we preach? I said, we'd just go through the Bible. And then listen to this. I said, we'll just go through the Bible and find what we believe and just that'd be it. And then he asked me this question. I don't know why he asked it, but he did. He said, what would God have to do to prove to you he's God? Now me and my buddy were driving down the road. Teenage boys, crazy, talking about what would God... I said, I'll tell you what he'd have to do for me. And he's listening. I said, I would say, okay, you want to prove you God? Then I want you to take... I heard that song, 100 Pounds of Clay, and I don't know if you've ever heard that. But I said, I'd ask God to take some clay, take 100 pounds of clay, and make a person out of it, and then breathe life into them. If that person stood up alive, I'd believe he's God. That's what I said. Now, truthfully, God could have said, that's it, this idiot's done. And it would have been, hey, I said it. And I'd just about forgotten about that until when God saved me. And one of the things that crossed my mind the night that I went home after I got saved, when I was laying in bed, my wife and I couldn't sleep. We were so excited I'd been saved. One of the things that crossed my mind is God didn't take clay. He took me and made me new again. Thank Him for that. God. You know, that's God. And every time I drive down the road of Pine Island, I, I'm not every time, but I often think about that. How foolish I was to make that statement. How good God's been to me to make me brand new again. And I've seen God do that over and over again. Do you know this, this is a special place? This is hallowed ground. God's done a work on this place. God's done a work here. God's, God's moved in people's lives. Families have been reached. Lives have been transformed. People have left out of here and gone and done things around the world. God has done something here. This is a holy place. And we ought to sometimes just clear off a spot and thank God for it. Amen. Amen. I love it, don't you? Father, thank you for your goodness. I pray you'd help us tonight. Thank you for Naaman. Thank you for that unusual request. Now, we don't know everything that happened with those mules loaded with earth, but we certainly have an imagination. We can only imagine what it was like when they saw the dirt and they saw those mules. Knowing that this is where he's going to stand. He's going to stand on this soil and declare in his nation that you're his God. Lord, one day we'll get to see that. We don't know where that soil is today, but it's still in Syria somewhere. And it's powerful soil. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us. Help this place right here. This soil we're standing on, where this building's built, this place, may this be a place where you meet with us and transform lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand if you would, please. And tonight, if God has spoken to your heart, I want you to come. If you're here and you're not sure you're going to heaven, oh my goodness, don't waste a moment. Come to Jesus. He'll make you brand new. <laughs> oh, only He can. Thank you for watching. Join us on Sunday morning. We look forward to meeting you.